he had to uh, move to Australia. So um, life was a lot easier for us and him uprooting his life for us to change. I know how important it is, uh, especially with this group of young boys and parents that entrusted themselves with, uh, uh, with Coach Layton and with Coach Neal, with the help of Coach Neal. Um, so I don't take that lightly. Um, but uh, I was very happy to get involved with the 2011 boys. Um, as some of you may know or, or, or don't know, I coach at the uh, men's team at the University of Windsor, but really this is where I spend most of my life coaching and I have honed my craft mostly at this age. Um, so I really like working with players kind of from the ages of 11 to 14. That's really something I love. So um, I'm gonna try to flow through this. Um, I don't know, I just went with this color scheme. I, uh, so that's what it is. So get to know myself, just introduce myself because some of you uh, may have only seen me on a Zoom before or at a field or not at all. Talk about, remember why we're here, a little bit of a fall review. Talk about what 2023 is looking like. Talk a little bit about off uh, player development philosophy. Talk about the, uh, get a little survey that's the interactive part, the priorities for your child and then a million and one questions are always like every year, as soon as the year starts, like, well, what happens, what's happening next year? So I just want to address that and provide information and then follow up question and answer. I always say, ask questions here. It's easier to have, uh, to answer questions when everybody's here rather than we have to have six phone conversations with six different people and sometimes about the same questions. So if you're thinking it, somebody else probably is too. Um, so here we go. So. Myself, Prime and Notes, I'm 37 years young. Um, I keep having to change this, uh, so I'm getting older. Uh, I've been married for three years. I started away from my anniversary, so now I'm okay. So I'm a relatively new father. Uh, it's a big part of my life. My daughter's just under two years old. Uh, uh, those who know me, some don't, I'm very family oriented. My mom's my source of inspiration. You'll probably see her at games. She misses not being able to watch her sons play. We're all washed up husbands. She probably uh, 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 will come out to see the, uh, she loves watching us coach. Two brothers, my brother Daniel's a women's coach at the University of Windsor. I have the privilege of coaching with my, uh, one of my brothers and my um, other brother Alex. Um, he's probably the best coach of all of us, but he is not coach, he's, uh, he lives in Arizona. Um, all that know my history, I'm a uh, head coach of men's soccer at the University of Windsor since 2018, so it's been five years. Four seasons, seasons in a pandemic. I've been the sporting director or technical lead at Tecum Seat from about 2015. Before that, I was more so, we weren't really a large club performing at higher levels, so I was more just coaching. Uh, I've been involved in our League One program, watching our League One program, and previously League One men's head coach in the city. Uh, I've been a youth soccer coach, university assistant, a long time. Um, uh, playing experience. Uh, I went to Detroit Mercy from my university, uh, played ball there as a goalkeeper, uh, got my scholarship there. Uh, I did two stints over in England when I was in high school before I chose to stay and play. I played my um, youth ball. I used to live in Rochester Hills, Michigan, so I played for Vardar, moved to Florida, moved back up to Windsor, played for in Windsor for one year, and then went back and finished up my youth career playing for Vardar. So um, when we play them, a lot of the same coaches are still around. This is really small, but again, you'll get all this. Um, I like setting out because kind of you can see everything there's to know about me. I really like learning new things. So I'm very interested in um, uh, how young uh, kids think and learn. So a lot of my education is there. I'm uh, currently, um, although I don't know if I can continue getting busy, but I'm doing my master's at UBC in high performance coaching and technical leadership. It's a program I get to do with, uh, there's only like uh, 18 coaches in the country selected every year. And um, I, I, I work with other Olympic coaches. I get to be on, in class with them uh, two days a week. Uh, and they're out from other sports, so we get to learn from each other. Uh, and my A license, uh, technical director diploma, I was the first one to do it uh, in the country. We did the pilot pop project back in 2016, I was invited, and then I did the last one before COVID. Um, that just works on coach mentorship and things like that in the US and the National Sea. 
a problem more relevant to us, first aid, CPR, and AD. And then um, something that's really important to me, especially over the last few years, especially with young people, I've been involved uh, in a lot of trainings involving equity, diversity, and inclusion, and I think that's really important as our young boys slowly start to get some testosterone in them and slowly start to become a little bit more assertive. Um, just catching them being really, really good, inclusive, positive humans, and curtailing things that maybe could go sideways in today's world and having uh, a larger sensitivity and awareness of that and situations that can occur. Uh, you as parents have to do the hard work, but I can at least catch things, and I think that's important to know that I'm very aware of that. Um, you can read all this, but uh, I, I want to have these kids pursue, and I want to educate their development and everything, but I have to keep the game fun. So it's got to, we got to have positivity in what we do, uh, and we want to prepare the players for the next step. Um, but for me, it's all about in, uh, nurturing and intrinsic motivation in them. So every kid is going to start. Uh, getting momentum and, and, and uh, motivation at different times, my job is to nurture that. When they're on the, on the downswing, my job is to support them and help them reflect, um, but not sometimes not to stop the, the downfall. Sometimes you need to fall a little bit, uh, but then my job is to build them back up. Uh, coaching philosophy and goals, I want to develop quality people and capable people we can be proud of. I want them to have a lifelong love and participation in the sport of soccer. Um, I went to school, psych poli sci level major, and now I'm a soccer coach, so um, every, like, for me, I love the game. I want to prepare players for the next level, whatever that next level is. Could be making their grade school team, could be making their high school team, could be going to play university or something else. Um, I want to give them, uh, provide perspective of accepting their own limitations and showing them how teamwork can help them overcome that. And that I really believe in integrating, especially at these boys' age, boys into a team environment. Um, where they can, uh, are, are able and willing to work for the team. This is from the original document why we were here. So we talked about we want to have a year-round program with our 2011s. Uh, we want to create a bike versus light competition. So we want to go play against teams that are trying to play the right way. We want to be playing with players who are not just here to like run and smash and kick the ball away. Um, but they actually want to keep the ball. They actually are motivated to learn and incentivized to learn, and this group's proven that. We try to offer a little bit more competitive and comprehensive training environment, so I do get after them. Once I got my voice back on Saturday, I think the guys heard me. I don't think we were as organized as we could have been during the shooting drill, maybe. maybe we need to be a little bit more organized, and I think they were, they're great. Um, and then again, uh, try to help them understand me versus we is uh, crucial at this age and how we can overcome things that individuals can't. And then the same thing again here, help them uh, understand um, some individual goal setting. Um, this is a review of the fall. So, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, this is kind of how your fall went. Preseason week, uh, August tournament, some training, and then you got more regular training in September as daylight allowed. Then you played game, uh, you got in your DA games. You didn't do a second tournament in October, am I cor I'm correct on that? You guys didn't do a second tournament. Then we started indoor training mid-October, two games. Uh, we've done some indoor events and some games as available. Um, and that's kind of how the fall went. That makes sense. That's kind of how we presented it. I think we, we missed on the tournament. So this is kind of what we projected, and then I added in light blue, which I'm sure is really easy to read for you. So again, I'm sending this out uh, in PDF, and I sent out a video recording too. So um, if you notice, I started to add third session. We'll have another one this weekend. I'm just waiting on whether it's at 9.30 or 11, because um, I just want to see if we can play a scrimmage. The boys want to play a scrimmage. So if I can get them a scrimmage, I'll, we'll play a game, guys. Uh, if you can't make it to the alternate days, that's okay, um, but uh, do have the luxury sometimes with me being the person who does scheduling when I'm coaching a team. Sometimes my teams don't get, I usually worry about my team last, that's the reality, but what we do get is I'm the first guy who knows anytime a team like has a game in Michigan, so I know their turf's available, so we'll go snag it for us. We're all go there, so I will be 
Um, plus at U12, we try to give, again, these ages, I know how hungry these boys are. I saw how many kids came we had to put on the weekend. So try to add sessions whenever we come, Saturday, Sunday, maybe another one during the week. If I can get games, I've already put it out to the world, the coaching 2011, so if I can get games wherever we go, these kids love to play, or they, they, they pretend to really well, either one. Um, in February, uh, we'll probably do something, we always do something around uh, on family day, whether we get a uh, futsal at the university or whether we go across the border, there'll be an event offered. Um, again, uh, maybe there might be a situation where there's, there's either or. Um, just when I throw things out on play metrics, the sooner you mark, the better I can plan. Um, I'll give you an example. Like if we would go to like a futsal tournament and it's team a 5v5, I'll put in two teams and I'll tell the tournament organizer, kids are going to play for both. I want to maximize playing time. So um, if I know we have like the, the bare minimum of kids going, I'll put in extra teams so we can get extra playing time and kids can double lock. And I'm all about like time on ball when it's on the field. That's why the boys go. So and that's it. And I'll try to keep the third session available. I can be flexible with my schedule. I just have to make a minimum number of bedtimes with my daughter. That's a, that's a new rule more than my wife. But I try to help out as much as I can, but for me, I do try to make um, a lot of bedtimes. Uh, in March, um, at our age, so a lot of people ask, like, when do we start any kind of like physical literacy, training, fitness program? So not so much a fitness program, but what we are integrating on the boys' side. And you'll notice some stuff will come out on the girls' side. So girls' side and boys' side are, are different. Girls and boys' bodies are, uh, need different support at different times. So, but what we will be doing in March is what we're doing for all our uh, athletes is doing testing. So this isn't like um, we're going to do this testing to see like, like are you fast enough or are you fit enough. It's not that. It's, it's we want to start it young for a couple of reasons. One, we want to normalize the testing environment for them, meaning like the first time a player does a. A deep test shouldn't be when it matters. It should it should be something that they've done a million times. Okay. Um, the other thing, it's cool. It's fun to know how fast you are. How fast can you cover 5, 10, 30, 40 meters? That's fun to, to know. Um, and then what we're doing, we're partnering up with the university and leveraging a little bit of stuff there, is uh, they'll get that data tracked. So at this age, we won't test as frequently, but our older athletes, our high school age athletes will be testing every other month. We're looking at twice a year for us, we'll test twice this year, um, and then it will slowly increase. But what that'll do is if you think about your son when they're in like grade 10, they'll actually have like a book of their progress as like an athlete across all speed parameters, all agility parameters, and at their age, very limited strength parameters, but as we add them. So it'd be a, a cool thing that they can look back, look back on. Uh, obviously, it's very private to each individual player, but it's something we want to add. Some kids really, really love that kind of measurable data, and it drives them, right? Because we can gamify it for them. Now it's like, oh, okay, now they can work on uh, their, their, their speed or their ability to cover distance, or they can do these little exercises at home. Some kids don't, and that's okay, but it's another layer that we want to use to inspire some motivation themselves. Um, and like I said, we'll do that preseason, and then we'll probably do one around August, September. Um, then in April, I think I've already put, I put both tournaments in April up there already. Um, again, I've kind of given everybody until the middle. You'll see at the end, the middle of February to mark it. Um, and then I'm not sure the exact date I make the schedule, but I'm pretty sure it's in March uh, that I make the league schedule. So as soon as I have the game I like to schedule my games early, um, like get them, I don't mean early in the, I mean like as soon as the, it opens, I like to schedule because I'm a busy person, and as you are, so if I can get the games um, there, that is something I don't procrastinate on. There's lots I procrastinate on, but scheduling games is not something I do. The two tournaments are on there in April. I'd like to do an additional event in May, um, whether it be something Memorial Day weekend, or uh, Mother's Day weekend. I don't really want to travel again. I think traveling is costly. So meaning like by not traveling, I mean like picking something in Michigan where it doesn't require an overnight stay. Where if you want to stay overnight, that's fine with you. And if you don't, that's okay. But when we go away to something like Cincinnati, it requires. Okay? Again, let me just reiterate, 
I need you to put your number. So there's a, there's opportunities for us to go down to tournaments like in Border Stars, enter two teams, probably make it like ability based. Kids will get be able to play for both groups. I'll shuffle it so instead of playing three games, you'll probably play every kid will probably get like four games, and you'll be able to uh, play lots. But the earlier we can plan, um, I'm very resourceful with on both sides of the border. I can get guests anywhere. So if we just need numbers, I'll you know for close, I'll always get us numbers. Okay, um, but I also don't want to bring too many subs. Like I think we've seen at the like the tournament and the, the, the game we went over to. I just like minimum, I like them playing. If you're gonna drive, if you're gonna wake up early and drive somewhere, I want them to be on the field. Um, and then like I said, we're, we will do some, in May we will do some uh, some education with them, just about, uh, you, again, about physical literacy and movement, but just more talking about education on what speed is, how they can be strong, how they need to warm their bodies up. Not that it's essential at this age, but start getting good habits in their, in their head. There we go. Uh, we do do information nights in May, but basically when we talk about trying out for next year's team, I'll touch on that at the end. What I did, what I included was the presentation we made last year to the 2010s, which is basically the same thing we're doing this year, but so you can actually watch and read through the whole presentation, kind of about what's coming. I don't like doing like the whole info thing, but I'm including that with what I sent out to you. Okay? But basically this, we, this takes us to, August and September, and then we uh, identify and try out for next year. I have one question. Yes. Uh, the game in Ohio, yep. it's four hour distance. Yep. What time do you think that the game will start? So I always ask for later kickoffs uh -huh. because not everybody goes and travels Friday, but I can never guarantee that, guarantee that we have late enough kickoffs. For that, it would probably be like both. Oh, we're out saying overnight here. Friday, yeah, Saturday. Yeah, that's, what plan. that's what I would plan. But once we get the schedule, they're, uh, they're good. The hotels in Cincinnati are pretty good. They've always been good with us. And when they can, that the reason why we choose certain tournaments is because they are flexible with our scheduling. Well, I already got um, one thing wrong. Anyways, uh, we're the 2011 boys program. Sorry, guys. Um, but when I talk about the player development philosophy, we just want to create an environment where players are, like I said, engaged and invested in their development. So I'm still at, at, at this age prioritizing individual philosophy and I'm encouraging like a lot of autonomy. So even today at the end, we played for like 23 minutes. Um, like I told the boys, the extra session that I work on technique allows us to play a little bit more. But I give them constraints and then see how they can uh, try to encourage them to take autonomy and a little bit of ownership of themselves and their group to solve the problem we present. So the first one was uh, not passing. The second one was when a player gives the ball away, you have to do burpees. So now you're down a player, what do you do? Um, and then same thing, nurturing young leadership qualities. Constantly worried about being vocal. Right? Um, and then introduce an understanding of tactics. So at this age, I'm just introducing tactics. I have zero expectation that they understand and retain it, okay? Uh, the forgetting curve is a real thing in adults and kids, and especially these kids. So we know when we tell them something, like I'm sure when you tell them to make their bed or clean up something at home, they forget to do it in, in two weeks. We know that they're gonna forget and retain certain stuff, that's okay. We continue to introduce tactical concepts and team strategy. And then, <coughs> The final one's very important. Uh, this is, if I were to say, like one thing that was the uh, predictor of future success of whether your kid is gonna be able to uh, be resilient and drive themselves forward no matter what, would it be if they can have individual competitiveness. And I provide them, we are gonna provide them persistent, consistent feedback with progress reports so that they can compete with their former self. So it's not about competing with others, because we can take any child and we can put them in an environment where they're the best, or I can go take them to an environment where they're the worst player. Doesn't matter how good you are, right? But it's can you compete with your former self? Can you be better today than you were yesterday, tomorrow than you were today? So we start a lot of game reflections. So with every team, there's like six main ways I do this. 
individual player meetings, so at this age, it's not as many as I, we do with the older team. Um, to give you an idea, with the university men, we do three meetings inside of eight weeks, meet with them every other week. These boys will be doing three throughout the year. We talk about goal setting on and off the field, and for me, with this group, there's a chance for get, to get to know them. The second one's really important. Start getting them to do uh, self-evaluation and reflection, reflection surveys. So I like to do it. I don't like everyone doing this at the same time, meaning like um, if, if today, if I was having us do a reflection survey at the end of practice, I might only have five kids do it at a certain time. Because I find that, I found that when I'm having the whole team do a reflection survey, it changes the practice. So every boy, if I told every, all you guys, next week after Wednesday's practice, you gotta do a, we're gonna fill out a, a quiz about afterwards, a survey about whether you uh, whether you communicated well. Right, your, your uh, teamwork on a scale of one to five. What was your work ethic like today? Practice changes. So for me, I like having a pocket of kids do it. So if you notice that your son's doing something somebody else isn't, that's why. Because I try to keep it in a realistic environment. So again, we talk about their abilities. So do they feel they're getting better? Their training habits, meaning like, is their body shape on? Are they checking their shoulder? Do they have the, the drive we want? Um, and then game actions. Notice how I don't say game performance, because there's not performance at this age. Worry about what actions they execute. They either executed the action or they did it. That's okay. We're not worried about performance. That's not what they're here to do. Uh, film review of training. So in um, probably closer when we go outside, uh, but we might do a session or two inside. Uh, I've filmed sessions. Me personally, I like to use film as a tool to keep myself getting better and improve. Um, got, I make this uh, film of our training sessions readily available to the boys. Um, and then in our meetings, we can pull up things. So if I know that uh, so-and-so had a really good session today, you just balled out at the end of the scrimmage, I can make a note, maybe send you the link, or maybe we can talk about that in our next meeting. And then, uh, Obviously, we'll, we, uh, I'll be bringing the camera to all of our games, and then also we we'll talk about review film of best practices. So maybe we watch uh, Man City or Arsenal play right now. Um, or I have, we have film of our provincial, uh, and national, and other professional teams. The fourth thing we do is benchmarking abilities individually and collective. So when I say that, um, I have videos of past teams at their age, their age doing, let's say, like a, a passing exercise. So we say, this is what this team looked like doing it. This is what you guys look like doing it. What differences, what similarities, what do you see? And then can you improve? So they can start benchmarking themselves against other um, players their, and groups their own age. And when we talk about individual abilities, they're like, okay, I gotta get better. But then when we say as a team, how do we perform this exercise together? This passing drill, this whatever, the shooting drill. Can we do it like this team? It allows them to start benchmarking, wait a second, if 14-year-old boys in California can do this, if 12-year-old boys in, in Spain can do this, I can do this, I'm, I'm a 12-year-old boy. So maybe I just need to work. And this provides me the modeling. Five competitive environments introduced in exercise on field, so that's simple, uh, as well as homework activities sent off field. So the homework that I send isn't maybe the normal coach homework all the time. So sometimes it might be uh, juggling, whatever, uh, film yourself doing 500 juggles, no problem. But sometimes it's like uh, do a gratitude journal every day for a week, bring it in. Kid who brings me back all their five, uh, five days in a row of their gratitude journal, you get something. Um, so it's not always competition soccer specific, but I try to build good healthy habits in, the, in them. And then the last thing, um, my youngest brother, the one who lives in Arizona, uh, he used to do this for us, because um, this is his, uh, this is what he does in school for. Uh, but we did a, a new uh, character, and I don't like calling it uh, character trait, I like calling it character skills, uh, but awareness and development. At their age, I'm still talking about awareness. So the awareness of when you are resilient, uh, when you are adaptable, um, when you do show leadership, but there, we will be doing a couple of workshops on like four key components, of four key character skills, and I want to try to emphasize them in our spring season, and then we can look for how we can display them in game, in tournament when we're losing four nothing, 
and how resilient can you be? Um, that's really important. Again, trying to set them up for successful life stuff. Awesome. So, I need, this is what I need you to do. I need you to pull your smart, smartphone, and I need you to go to menti.com. <laughs> so this is what I was talking about, about planning for the future. So you're at the, the peak of grassroots. You're at U12, they call grassroots football um, in, in North America. At the end of the season, um, you start going into what people like to call a performance stream or a talented bad player, and there's, there's lots of options. You can continue playing locally. You can play at a regional level. Uh, you can play at a provincial level. And um, the, the, best, the best way is, and I'll send out the actual link and I'll attach the presentation, but in September we did a presentation to the 2010s. So I never like to say that it's gonna be exactly the same as it was last year, but like um, generally the partnership between us and Kubota, like is uh, we did a really good job last year with the 2010 group. We finally uh, gotten things right, got our flow, got our communication. Um, two big organizations working together, longtime rivals working together. So um, it's good to watch that information if you want information on what's coming next. I don't like to talk about stuff eight or nine months down the road because different, uh, there's lots of variables in that. But basically it's having your child the opportunity to play at the highest level uh, in Ontario. Maybe that's not, that doesn't work out for you. The presentation has like a breakdown literally of like cost per hour. Uh, we talk about the amount you drive in each league, kilometers driven, things like that. Um, we, we try to cover everything we can. We'll be doing uh, in late May, early June, an information session with these groups. And then in July, August, we start some player identification sessions uh, with the 2011 group and uh, start talking about, and we start talking about where we think maybe right for your child. You might say, hey, that, that, uh, I can't drive, I can't leave the city, I, I just need to play local. Mm -hmm. Then we have a discussion. But through all the individual meetings that Coach Neil and myself have with, the players, we should have a really good handle and we hope to be uh, communicating to you. So um, I, I, I think tribes are stupid, especially with 12 year old boys, uh, 11 year olds, 10 year olds, 13 year olds, I think it's dumb. Um, all we know is that we're not gonna get it right. That's all, all I can tell you about tryouts is we're gonna be wrong, 100%, <coughs> especially with boys. When you're talking about how they grow and develop, we have no idea. So. We just can talk about where boys are right now and where would be the best environment for them right now, and that's what we try to do. Sure. Are they going to be training again at uh, San Cecilia? I, I, I can't, I don't know exactly what this. So, this is what the problem is. During school, the school year, the times at Vista are varied because their fields used by the school board as a whole to play their soccer games. So, some nights, you know, this isn't available in like June, July. So I don't know where our training is yet. I promise our team will be the first to know. Because I make the schedule. Just to motivate them. Yeah. Uh, how many people, besides the head of like over 20 years in Mississauga, so I'm like back here and everything's new, I really don't understand what's going on. How far can they come? Um, we just had two players go down in Mexico with. Canada's U17 team, or, uh, right? We just had two of our 2006 born players, which was the last age I coached this year. They're just so, I don't know. Have you seen like young people at their age, like, like over the years? Like, yeah, they can do whatever they, whatever they want to do. There's a lot of factors. With, uh, I, I think um, uh, their drive, they have to love what they're doing every day. And then we have to see what their body does. And then we have to help prepare their minds to be able to handle the pressures of <coughs> getting more and more competitive. They have a soccer ball in their sweat every single day, but it's just their confidence that they really don't believe that, that they're here. Yeah, well, we're here. We can help kids continue to raise their level and learn skills and try to uh, protect them from the pressure as long as we can. And in the meantime, giving them skills to avoid 
uh, uh, handle the pressure when it comes. So next steps. Um, I'll try to have all the additional sessions and events finalized by February 15th. So like I said, like a main tournament, and I'll send that out. I'm really trying to have it by the end of this month. So if I add the main event, add it in there. Don't think that won't be added. I just, like I said, again, our extra practices so on the weekend so you know what to do. Um, there will always still be extras. If I can get us games, um, I'll always try to get us games or some extra stuff. Uh, just, uh, I have two questions. So um, first off, uh, for the remainder of this fall season, going into spring, um, are we solidly coaches? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm coaching the, coach yeah, yeah, I'm coaching the group. I don't have to, and then head into regional, like, obviously for their 12-year-old age group now. So <clears throat> they have this pre opdl program. You're going to work out if they're going to go play all five soccer, or they're going to play pre opdl because they can't play all three soccer either as well. Yeah, so for us, like, they'll just play locally, and then we, we schedule our own games at that level. Okay. All right, enough. And uh, my last question is, when will they completely now convert and not play the state of Liverpool and it will be become something? So when would it be? Uh, when would it be that? So, like, would Canada, so, when, so, in, so in Canada, we can't play as Liverpool. Right. So when we play in Canada, we have to get our paperwork through there. Just like right now, when we play in the US, we have to be through Liverpool. So, because I've seen on the schedule, you'll have one local team starting in the spring. Yeah, yeah. That'll be with the company. Yeah, yeah, it'll be, yeah. So then, no, we're a United be. shirt, that's why I didn't have them lose. Okay, okay. So, but yeah. And, and still exhibitions are possible over there, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, we can, and we, can start, we can start going to events there, because after June 15, events over there are called U13, so then we can, we can get travel permits, so then we can get, ins it's all about insurance, so we can get insurance over there. So, yeah. As a Canadian team. Tecumseh holds OPDL and also the Tecumseh holds OPDL right now. Tecumseh's Tecumseh chosen and will go over in the thing. We've chosen not to run regional. So we have Kabodo running regional and then we can we operate together. So Kabodo's running regional or local? Kabodo runs regional. Kabodo runs regional. So Kabodo, so when we had the tryouts, players who made the top provincial team play uh, where it's Tecumseh shirt currently. Players like the 2010, the second group is actually, and that ended up being coached <laughs> by Coach Luke, uh, who will, we play, will probably play against the Saturday. They're, they play under Komodo. So, uh, same old training philosophy, same approach, two organizations working together because we're working towards something but. Baby steps. Yeah, I'm only asking because at that 12 age group, you're only going to have pre OPDL or local soccer. It doesn't really change until 13. Yeah, so in the fall, so in, in August. Yeah, yeah. So this summer, yeah, this summer, we just play against other 12 year old teams. We would be playing against, so locally, like, that's why I said, locally, the kids want a game all the time to yeah. say, like, hey, you got to wait every three weeks to get a tournament, the boys get bored. They want to go play where they have a rap and they can score. And sometimes they'll win by a lot, sometimes they'll mix up the roster. So again, parents don't have to always have an extra game every week. So for Payne to clarify, when does it come, like, how does that convert over from what we're paying now? So the payment takes us to all the way till okay. OPDL regional tryouts in September. So okay. you're, you're, you're covered to September 1st. And then, sorry, then it would be uh, the change over to Yeah, so yeah, that was when the tryouts happen and then you can start um, to come see Kimoto, uh or to be local here as well. So we kind of run this together. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah? So for, so for the local league, I'm not worried about, I want them all to play different yeah. players. When we, go, when we go tournaments away, that's gonna be one based on availability. Yeah. Ideally, if every kid came to every event, I would have two teams. I would do it more ability-based. 
because locally I can, we can mix players. Right? At this age, we're moving towards ability-based, where players who are a little bit more advanced right now will, will play with those. Players who are learning different skill sets will play with those. And sometimes you need to be in both environments. There's a lot of players in between. We have a mixed bag of kids. Um, if we had everybody going, I'd do two. The tournaments that I choose are very friendly on rosters. So I would run the two rosters of 11, move, be able to move kids. So we have like 14 kids on the sub, give kids a chance, maybe if they're in the middle, to be a leader one game and then um, to move up. But that would be ideal. And then locally, just switch them up. When we go away, same thing. When we go away, a lot of other clubs are in the same position we are. So when we go to London, they have two. So we'll either set up two games at the same time, like side by side, 9v9, could be back to back, 9v9 type thing. To, to when play. you say local, like who are you playing, like the other version? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, the local league just to give them a third day. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then that's where I don't want to play in that every week. Okay. Um, and then I can cycle through, give based on availability who's in town, give on different levels of games. Give on players who maybe they missed a few events so that maybe the uh, family couldn't travel in the spring for events. Give them more time locally. Like I, I really do monitor how much how much we try to get kids to play because that's how you get better. Anything else? Yeah. When you perform, they just need the Liverpool ones right now. I'll I'll handle the one what they're gonna wear in the summer. No, so we're just going to pick up games. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to, that kind of money, I'd, I'd rather do some events. Okay. Um, then with our group go over, we could put two teams in, and then one team that we're stuck with too many. We're going to probably get a three, four more games and some games in London, so I'm okay with our amount of games. I'd rather do like another event and put another team in. Um, so, so okay, so uh, anytime we, tr we, we travel out, it's th 30 cents a kilometer for the coach. I will always travel with anyone. Some coaches are weird about that, but I'd rather save the money and I would hop in with anyone, just so you guys know. It saves the team money and I don't have a problem with um, uh, or like worried about like favoritism or somebody worried about that, I don't, I don't really care. So I'm just all about saving our team being in the budget. Um, same thing with uh, travel and lodging, um, the hotel room. I pick events when I can, like I think I mentioned the one we went to in the States. I try to pick events where I can like not charge the youngest team that I'm, uh, the, the younger team that I'm coaching because I'd rather keep costs down as long as I can. So the team fees include any expected travel uh, and the tournament fee. So that's what uh, the team budget, once everybody finalizes, marks the availability. I know how, whether we're entering two teams in, border stars or one, then I can figure out uh, uh, the other cost. And then we already have, um, one sponsor, a potential second, and anything that can comes in to help. Um, we send out the sponsor form this week to help lower that down, it was better. So um, that question will be sent out, it's just really simple. And that, the collection of it, um, the club pays for the tournaments up front, and then we'll schedule it after. So one of the things used to be like, you know, you're doing like monthly payments for registration, but then you have to pay for the tournaments all in March and April too, and it's like everything's happening at once, and everybody's traveling for hockey or basketball or whatever, and it's just like money hemorrhaging. So we do the, the, the money one month later, one month after our last payment, or we space it out as we need for team fees. But we, but we, it's not like we're waiting on um, us collectively to collect the money to, re to register for the tournament anymore. We only need that problem. Um, So every so I one team fee, we're on a team, everybody goes. 
So you have to pay whether you're coming or not. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. otherwise this happens, right? Yeah. Because uh, I used to have this problem. A sponsor would be like, I'll sponsor this tournament. So then 22 people went to the free tournament. And then nobody okay. goes to the, like, you know, so we're all in this together. Money's, money's an issue. And we help, we'll provide as much support. But what we can't do is um, punish people for participating. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's one of the things. Remember that one of the hurdles was lack of participation. Mm -hmm. That's something that causes. So like, hey, guess what? If I'm busy and every Sunday I can't take my son to the to when we play on Sundays, that's okay. But it doesn't mean that you should pay more for your son. We'll find a way around that. That's part of the answer. And I don't think it's a massive difference. I always find you find something to be in the middle. But that's again how we're able to be aware of those hurdles. I would. Are you sending this over? Oh yeah, yeah. This recording. Uh, everything. So, practices are going to continue Monday, Wednesday. As long as we're indoor, yeah. You're going to possibly get a third day. The Saturdays right now is what I'm managing to siphon off turf time because every time a team goes and plays a game, I snipe it up. Okay, and then when are we going to be going back to the States, like playing the States? That, uh, in, in April. In April? Yeah. And then what about the, um, like, London? That would be more in the summer when the Saints is done. Yeah, there might be some overlap though. Like, London might want us to come because they have a massive indoor facility, so they might want us to come play if they have indoor, some indoor space. Okay. So, would you say summer, like July, August? Yeah, June, like later June. in June. Yeah. So, they'll stay together as a team then? Yeah, all the way until about September 1st, till that uh, ID period happens. So we'll collect it all and I'll collect it all on Canadian. We open a Canadian account for the 2011s right now, so it'll be easier. It takes some uh, uh, stress on China. Yeah. So if they're not playing, there, there's we want the numbers to. You can go to the events, but if the kids who register for the DA will have priority for the, the actual league games. Okay. So the kids who are playing the league games will have actual, but we'll be but taking two teams to a lot of the events, mm -hmm. hopefully. So that's when it'll be it'll be easier. And then you also have you'll have the summer games. Yeah. Yeah. Next steps. Uh, I'll be doing warm up shirts. I uh, just need sizing from the boys. Um, I'll send out, not familiar, it's easy, Calendly. I use it for all my meetings. Uh, I like to uh, do the individuals on Zoom. Uh, there's all, uh, but you know, obviously, player and parent. So it goes to you. Make sure you uh, do it there. And then you'll be getting a feedback survey, an initial feedback survey. Um, one is for your uh, son to complete, one's for you to complete. Please let your son complete. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm, I'm very interested in how kids think. It helps me shape my approach constantly. I uh, just learn, I'm curious. So the, if I can get real data about what they're thinking about or what they thought of something, that would be fantastic. So don't let off that. Just fill out your, your parents. There was an earlier email a couple months, uh, a couple people in here uh, ordered uh, they need to come see um, shorts and socks and all that, but you're saying they're going to play the 33 in September? No, so in Canada, we'll need the shorts and socks. So that's... Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean the shorts and socks are the jerseys I can take care of. Okay, I did. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah.